Come to prayer with me this morning. Gracious and loving God, as we thank you for this day, we thank you that you have poured out your spirit upon us this day and each and every day. We thank you for continuing to present the opportunities in our lives as we reset ourselves in this new year. We ask that you simply just give us our spiritual disciplines and allow us to reestablish the ways that we come into knowing you and knowing life. I ask now that you would touch my clips of clay and mold them into the words that need to be spoken on this day and the words that come from my mouth along with the meditations on each and every one of our hearts. Let them ever be acceptable to you. In Christ we pray. Amen. So we've been in this series over the past several weeks called Reset. And as we began this new year, we are looking at resetting ourselves not only financially, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. But today we look at how we set ourselves and reset ourselves in our relationships and relationally. Some of you may be joining us for the first time virtually and worshiping with us for the first time. And we're glad that you took time out of your schedule to join us and to be a part of this worship. And we hope that as we come to the future and we be, are able to come back to in-person worship that you'll continue to join us at that time too. I wanted to pull a few things out of the gospel lesson this morning that struck me more so of how the friends carried the mat. You think about this mat that this man laid on as it was his life. It was his security. It was his identity. It is where he rested, but it was also a symbol of everything that was wrong. It screams to the world that this liability was amongst him and reminded him moment by moment why he was different from everyone else. It could have been the thing that was used to keep people at arm's distance. It also could have been things that he could have been ashamed of or he could have been fearful that people who would get too close would look at that liability as something negative. It also points out a weakness and that Matt could have been that barrier to keep his friends from having relationships with him. But both the paralyzed man and his four friends didn't see it as a barrier. They saw it as the connection to a point of relationship. And what they did was that they realized that that very point of pain could become the place where the community could bring the possibility of miracles. We've all got max in our lives and it's that shame that we often walk around with, that insecurity, that weakness, maybe even that secret. And we think of this liability that we keep from people and that we keep people far enough away that they won't see these things upon us. But what if instead we realized that the, that this very thing could be the incubator for a miracle in our life. The second thing that I got from scripture this morning was that his friends do the hard work. These guys sweated to get the guy to the house, and not only that, but to get him up on the roof, and they had to excavate the roof, and then lower him down through the ceiling to Jesus. I think a lot of times that we think the best friendships are the ones that are the easiest. But those best friendships are the ones that require some intentionality that causes us to sacrifice our time and our energy. The ones that require a little bit of emotional capacity and physical energy because those are the ones that are propelling us somewhere. 
that are moving us forward in life. Now, relationships are hard work and someone else's miracle may be on the other side of your sweat. Another thing that this scripture tells us is that friends often change us. We are different just as a result of our friends. Author Andy, Andy Stanley is in one of his writings tells us that friends will be determined by the quality and the direction of our life and that our friends often change us. Show me who is surrounding you and the people whose voices are the loudest in your life, those people whose opinions that matter most, and I will show you where you are heading, as he states. Plain and simple, our friends change us. I want to challenge us by start measuring the value of our friendships, not by what we get out of them, but what we bring to them. I will say that friendship invites the awkward, but sometimes it's the awkward that initiates the miracles. Friendship is hard work, but it is the hard work that brings that transformation. And I believe that the friendship reflects our faith and refines our faith at the same time. Our faith is what resets our lives. So we reset relationships, we reset faith, we reset life. Now, I wanna ask, how do we relate to one another? And how do we reset relationally? And what are some of the ways we can set relationships we are already in, in our lives? So the first thing that I encourage us to do is that when we are resetting existing relationships is to establish rhythms. I will say that one of the ways that I establish it is to set a schedule for myself, making sure that I get down to the gym on a regular basis, eat right, take care of myself, follow the things on my calendar and schedule. But I also set rhythms with my friendships. Now, lately, with virtual entendres, it's a little hard to be with those people in person, to have lunch or have coffee or to have a regular relationship in person. But lately, over this past year, it has been more connecting and having people connect through Zoom or virtual media to catch up on what's happening in one's lives. And I've done that, and I've intentionally done that in establishing some of those rhythms to keep my life moving forward. But we also have to focus on how we reset those existing relationships and how part of that includes practicing forgiveness. There are over three dozen commands in the New Testament that cannot be obeyed outside the context of relationships. Those are the ones that include phrases like one another, like love one another, serve one another, encourage one another, accept one another, forgive one another, and so on and so forth. And this forgive one another command is one that I think is a critical part in resetting our relationships. I don't know what we practice, but we don't practice it enough. And I think that it's because it requires practice. It requires practice to ask for forgiveness. And there is an art of asking for forgiveness. Another thing I believe we need to do in existing relationships is to eulogize people now. Have you ever noticed that it's at funerals where we hear the best things said about people? The best things that will ever be said about you will be happen when you're laying in a casket or an urn. Sad to say that, but it's one of those facts in our lives that we hear about people and the great accomplishments that they've done when they're no longer with us. So many times when I'm at funerals, I often wonder, did that person have an opportunity to hear what they were like when they were alive? Did they know how the person felt about them in life? I say, give that eulogy now while those people are alive and living because Unexpressed gratitude communicates in gratitude. I think with those existing relationships, we need to redraw some boundaries. There are those people that you need to relate with to in a different manner. It might be because of circumstances or because the shift in the relationship, or maybe 
because someone has moved away. And the way you experience that friendship is going to look very different than the next. Maybe it's one of those major life changes that has gotten you all partnered off. Or it's one of those things in life that has brought you into new relationships or permanent relationships or one that has new responsibilities. We have to constantly redraw the boundaries and rethink intentionally in our relationships. It's hard because change means movement and movement always requires friction. And when those things change, our relationships just have to move with the season. But we need to remember that the key to this is intentionality. Sometimes redrawing the boundaries means becoming less intentional with the relationship, and it's okay that we do that. Sometimes letting go of a friendship or becoming a bit less intentional because it has been inconvenient or not easy is an okay thing. However, if you're finding that the value is changing and you're not adding value to that, the, 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 at the same time not adding value to you, that those friendships require new energies and those friendships become exhausting and may require us to look at and re-examine where we are in those relationships. So take time and reset your existing relationships as you move into this year. I want us to encourage us by discovering new relationships. I believe that love is always seeking to expand its communion. Love wants more and healthy community is always open to new community, new horizons in looking out. Now I know in this day of COVID and social distancing, it's a little hard to do. But as we move forward and we're able to come back together, we need to look at those possibilities. I want to encourage you that the one thing that you might want to do this year is become with friends with someone that are not like you. You heard me correct, to come in contact with somebody who may not be like you. Because when friends are with people who are different, it becomes something different in our lives. We all have different stories and we have all different perspectives and even preferences that are different. And it will expand those understandings of who we are in God's eyes. It all ex also expands our new view. It makes us less selfish and makes us less light, makes us less boring in life. If God wanted to create a boring world, God would have made everybody the same, just like you or me. Become, with fr become friends with someone who is different than you and friends who are people who are neither impressed by you or intimidated by you. I want to go back to the gospel lesson for a moment only because I want to look at the paralyzed man. I want us to look at it because I would have wanted to meet the guys who took care of him. It's interesting how we don't know even their names. But it's also noteworthy that I guarantee you that that paralyzed man knew every one of their names and would never forget their names, in fact, would never be able to do what he was doing or to tell a story without mentioning their names. All of us have people in our lives that we can't really tell our story. We can't tell that story because we don't, can't do it without mentioning their names. And I want us to encourage us to share those stories in the future and to mention their names as you're sharing those stories. As I close this morning, I want us to remember what Jesus' mission really was. And that was to hit the reset button on relationships. Jesus came in order to reset relationships between us and God and to reset relationships between other people and us. That's what Jesus' mission was. It's interesting to realize that Jesus wasn't just willing to carry the mat, but he was willing to carry a cross. And he wasn't just willing to sweat on one behalf or our behalf, but to bleed on our behalf at the same time. As we continue to cultivate relationships and newity in this new year, let us look at the relationships and different views and aspects as God has intended them to be. Continue blessings to each of you this morning, Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church. Amen.